This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Bijou Basin Ranch. Use promo code LK2G to get 5% off at their online store. Um, I'm not sure. Less than a year, I'd say. And since then, do you feel like you've been more of a knitter, less of a knitter, bought more stuff, less stuff? I definitely spend more time looking at knitting on Ravelry than I actually spend knitting now. <laughs> you've made, is this yours? Did you make this? Yeah. It's a really pretty shrug. Uh, tell us about it. Um, it's the two-tone shrug from um, Stephanie Japel's book, Fitted Knits. And I actually bought this yarn two weeks ago. <laughs> So you just made this for the for the uh, Rhinebeck trip? Yeah, yeah. So where did you come from today? Um, Nashua, New Hampshire. What are you doing here? Um, buying as much as I can. <laughs> so you've already made some purchases? Yeah, bought a bunch of yarn and tons of roving, even though I haven't even started spinning yet. Uh-oh, a condor. Yeah. <laughs> did you get a spindle? I did. Which one? I got a golding spindle. <laughs> That means you're now a golden girl. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from New Milford, Connecticut. Is this your first time at Rhinebeck? Yes, it is. Ooh, a Rhinebeck virgin. Yes. <laughs> it looks like you've got, bought some stuff there. What'd you get? Just lots of roving. I'm a beginning Ooh, spinner. Look at those colors. Yeah. It's like mustard and... Yeah, oh, lots of mustard and greens. And yeah, I, I uh, went to the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival in the spring and I got a kit and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah? So, uh, so you're a knitter too? Yes, I grew up on a farm in Tennessee, and my grandmother taught me how to knit and crochet and sew when I was eight years old. So, oh, cool. So, how'd you end up in Connecticut? I got married. <laughs> so, do you still do a lot of knitting, even though you're not on the farm? I do more knitting now than I ever did. It's just something my church was doing some charity knitting, and I thought I'd do a sweater, and one turned into eight. Then I started doing a lot of other stuff, and now I'm just I do it every day. I'm having a ball and I've already spent half my budget and I broke the straps on my bag filled with fiber so I had to go get rid of it and put it in the car. <laughs> so you're a spinner? I'm a brand new spinner. I just got a wheel. Yeah, I got it on Craigslist. So. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your podcast. Sure. Well, I've been doing the Socks in the City podcast, the podcast for sock knitters, for about 18 months and it's on Libsyn or on iTunes. Um, and I'm at about 30 shows and they, they're all, you know, you can download them all. And I try to keep it really focused on sock knitting. So I only will do, even though I do do lots of other things, I try to keep it really focused for the people who are like a little crazy like I am about the socks. <laughs> so are you really a fanatic? How many have you, have you knit yourself? Well, you know, I was evaluating that. I probably only knit about 15 pairs and I tend to collect a lot of stash yarn and I just really love them. The, the hand-painted yarns are really what got me started knitting, and socks are such a great way to do it, because you can just be crazy. My daughter got me this yarn. That's really pretty. Yeah, it's a Nancy Bush design. So do you think you'll start spinning to knit socks? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> this is actually our third trip. Our first trip was as a new knitter. Our second trip was as a new spinner. And this year, I'm full-fledged. I know what I'm looking for. I know the good ones to hit as soon as I get through the gate. <laughs> So what have you bought already? Um, I want to say, what well, haven't we bought? Um, we hit Spinner's Hill, and I got three pounds of beautiful hand-dyed Corridale to make myself a sweater. And um, what else did we buy? Oh, I picked up a fleece, so I'm very excited about that. And I picked up some yarn from a friend that has got a, a little, like, consignment with a booth. And that was about it for now. But Did you buy some stuff, too? 
Nope, no. I'm just... So you just steal from her stash? Oh, I'm not allowed. Oh, no, there's a rule in our house. I'm the senior knitter, therefore I can touch his stash, but I overrule him so he can't touch mine. <laughs> so where did you guys come from today? Um, we live in Selkirk, New York. It's about, uh, about an hour up from here towards Albany. So it's a, a close ride, but still a little bit of a ride. Tell us, tell us a little bit about this t-shirt here. Um, we both are on Ravelry, and we figured we we always like to match. So I have love because I love him, and he disagrees. Not about that I love him, just, you know, that I should buy yarn and stuff. You know, i got to keep it under control. <laughs> it's pretty much what it is. It's her choosing colors and everything else, and she'll pick it out, like it, and then just ask me what I think about it. Whenever I do, it's always the wrong decision, so that's why I just say, oh, I disagree. <laughs> Oh, hi. Hey, good. good. How are you? Good. You know, there's so many people in Ravelry that, that come to Rhinebeck. It's just nice to get everyone together and, and see everyone and talk to everyone. So a lot of it's for us so that we can sort of get to meet everyone. It's sort of recharging to come here, and re it's really fun for us, but it's also just gives everyone else a way to find their friends, you know, that are also at the festival. and. As a, as a programmer, did you ever expect that this would turn out to be such a popular thing? No, no way. Um, we, I mean, when we s started Ravelry, we, we just didn't think it, it would be appealing to everyone, you know, that they'd want to use it, but um, we were wrong. So how many uh, users are there now? Almost 200,000. Um, I think probably 199 and something, or almost 200,000, which is, which is huge. Like, it's, I don't know, it's, it seems like a really big milestone, so it's exciting. And it's never tempted you to learn how to knit? Um, not, not really. Um, I mean, Jess has never knit anything for me except for a hat, so um, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. On the, but um, so I don't like, you know, the things that she knits for herself are not things that I would want to knit. Um, so I haven't been tempted yet, although now with Ravelry I see that, you know, Jess's taste isn't my taste, but a lot of people make a lot of stuff that, that I think is really cool. So this is a small bob. And it's a little crocheted Bob finger puppet. Um, the guys from Malabrigo Yarn gave it to us. I don't know, they just, they really like Bob. They just thought it would be funny. And then after they gave it to us, um, they mailed us like five or six more. So we're giving out some tonight, actually. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to our second annual Ravelry Rhinebeck party. We have a lot of prizes. I know you guys are all ready and waiting with your tickets, so. Oh, and if you've won the prize, you have to make a noise because you have to be present. Yes, Casey. A any noise you want. <laughs> as long as it's a noise. We don't actually know exactly how many people came. We're kind of estimating 600, 700 people. Um, we didn't have a huge agenda. Um, it was mostly just a nice time to get everyone together. Um, we did have giveaways and our sponsors um, gave a lot of um, yarn and bags and all sorts of goodies that we had to give away. So that was like the main kind of activity later in the evening. Okay, up next we have from Bijou Basin Ranch one treasure box with 100% yak down. <gasps> Three, eight. Oh, oh, that's a noise. That was a noise. <laughs> was last night's party one of the biggest gatherings you've seen so far in the in the physical world? Yes. <laughs> it was a little an, a little overwhelming when everyone was coming. I was like, oh, I hope we have enough food. I hope we have, people can get their beverages. And people were really excited to get together. So it was pretty. Pretty crazy. <laughs> Does anybody remember at the party last year? Nobody would claim the Bob photos. Thank you. 
Our next live show is Saturday, May 30th at 6 p.m. Eastern. Join us to chat about your knit along project or whatever you're working on. Our sponsors, Carl and Eileen Coop from Bijou Basin Ranch, will be joining us, and you'll have a chance to hear about their yak farm and ask them any questions. They've also just sent me some of their newest yarn blend. It's a beautiful sock yarn that's 85% yak and 15% nylon in a huge 440-yard skein. I think I'll knit a pair of toe-up socks with this. Go to letsknittogether.com slash live for details on how to participate in the live show. And if you want any soft and luxurious yak yarn or fiber, go to our website, letsknittogether.com, and click on the Bijou Basin Ranch button to get to their online store. Use the code LK2G during checkout, and you'll get a 5% discount on your entire order. Thanks, everyone, for your comments on our Dishcloth Face-Off episode. It sounds like a majority of you all agree that Peaches and Cream was slightly better than Lion Brand and Lily. And now, the winner of this beautiful yarn from Diabolical Yarns is... Christina, a.k.a. Eyes for Books. Christina, contact me with your address and we'll get this out to you right away. <laughs>